Most refrigeration systems are subject to variable system loads caused by weather and product load fluctuations. For this reason, refrigeration systems must be capable of operating at part load. Engineers and plant operators achieve this in part by utilizing capacity control in compressors. In reciprocating compressors, capacity control is accomplished by what is called cylinder unloading. Cylinder unloading is accomplished by forcing one or more cylinder suction valves open. During the intake stroke, vapor will be drawn into the cylinder, but since the suction valve is forced open, no compression will take place during the compression stroke and the vapor will simply exit through the suction valve from which it entered. Unloading in reciprocating compressors typically occurs in two cylinder increments. For example, a six cylinder compressor could unload down to four or two cylinders corresponding to 66.7% or 33.3% capacity. An eight cylinder compressor could unload down to six, four or two cylinders or 75%, 50% or 25% capacity. So to understand how unloading happens in a reciprocating compressor, I want to go back to this diagram we looked at, looked at earlier, because it's actually kind of easy to understand once you're familiar with the compression process. And reciprocating compressors are unloaded by using a mechanism to force the suction valves open for all parts of the strokes. So let's, um, I'm just going to depict that here by simply, um, let's see, that's already open. So by doing this, so by forcing my, valve, my suction valve open during all stages, even as that cylinder um, begins to compress, this compression stroke, guess what? The suction vapor is just gonna push right back through the, the opening that it came through. So no compression will take place. Very similar to the bike pump that isn't connected to a tube or my finger isn't covering. There's gonna be no compression that takes place because of, of the wide opening. In screw compressors, capacity control is typically achieved by employing what is called a slide valve. The slide valve is located between the rotors and consists of a sliding member that covers an opening that allows gas to be vented back to suction. During part load conditions, the slide will move to uncover the opening which will decrease the amount of vapor that is compressed. Slide valves allow screw compressors a continuous range of unloading, typically from 100% down to 10% of their full capacity. So to explain capacity control in a screw compressor, let's, I've modified the diagram we used to talk about variable volume um, just slightly. And you can see that here, I've kind of, I've broken, I made a break in what formerly I just called our volume slide. And now we have two components to this. And this component here is often called a slide valve. And I like to explain capacity control and screw compressors to, to folks that are new to the industry by describing it like a trap door. That's how I think of it at least. So the uh, manufacturers build in a little trap door here. And by moving the slide, they can open that trap door so that as the suction vapor enters the screws, some of it is allowed to just escape through that trap door and go right back to suction so it never gets compressed. It's a similar, similar to forcing the suction valve open in a reciprocating compressor. Um, and But by moving that slide all the way to the right and sealing that off now, there is no trap door available anymore. So we'd be getting full compression. When we're talking about slide valves, they're usually, um, they're usually monitored by the percentage that they are uh, closing the, the opening, okay? So if a slide valve is at 100%, that means the compressor is operating at full capacity or it's full compressing potential. If the slide valve is like fully open, allowing the most gas to not be compressed, usually down to 10%. That's what I've at least seen. Like you won't, I see a slide valve all the way down to 1% typically, but 10%. So that gives a, a control of compression on one machine. You might have a 400 horsepower compressor, but by, by using the slide valve, it could operate as though it was a very small machine. So I trust that will help you understand how unloading works in a screw compressor.
Operating a compressor unloaded is less efficient than operating at full capacity. For this reason, larger systems will often have multiple compressors with different capacities. For example, let's consider a hypothetical system with a 100 horsepower, 200 horsepower, and two 400 horsepower compressors. When the system load is minimal, the 100 horsepower compressor will be the primary machine. When the load exceeds the 100 horsepower compressor capacity, the 200 horsepower compressor will take over and the 100 will meet any excess capacity needs. For larger loads, one or both of the 400 horsepower compressors may be required. The most efficient operation will have as many compressors as possible operating fully loaded and the 100 horsepower compressor trimming the remaining load. The compressor performing that function is often referred to as the trim compressor. A more energy efficient option for screw compressor capacity control is the utilization of a variable frequency drive or VFD on the compressor motor. VFDs modify the frequency of the power supplied to the motor, which in turn lowers the rotational speed. The beauty of VFDs is that the power consumption varies as a cube of the motor speed. This means that if we reduce the motor speed to one half of the design speed, the power consumed will be reduced to one over two cubed or one eighth of the original power. So in this example, I wanna show what the power savings or energy savings are when you lower the speed of a compressor motor or really any motor. This would apply to any motor, but in our application of refrigeration, we're talking about uh, unloading compressors. So let's say we have a 100 horsepower compressor and we use a variable frequency drive or a VFD to lower the speed of the motor from 3600 RPM, which is its natural or max speed, down to 1800 RPM which is exactly 50%. We're going at half speed. And we would do this, the variable frequency drive would do this by reducing the frequency of the power from 60 Hertz down to 30 Hertz. So we already learned that the relationship between RPM and horsepower looks like this. It's a, it's a cubic relationship. Okay, we have our second RPM on the numerator, our first RPM on the denominator. These could be flipped. We could put the first up top and the second down low, so long as we do it on both sides in the same way. So let's let's go ahead and solve this problem. Our, our uh, second RPM I, is given to us in the problem. It's 1800, so I'm gonna write that here, 1800. And our first RPM, RPM one is 3600. Of course, the units are RPM, they'll cancel out just to save space. I'm not going to write that. And that's equal to the cube root, which you draw like this, of our horsepower um, at the beginning, which is a 100 horsepower compressor, and our horsepower at the end, which is horsepower two. That's what we don't know, horsepower two. This is what we're wanting to solve. So we now have everything we need to solve this problem. So 1800 divided by 3600, that's pretty easy. That's one half, exactly one half. Um, and that's equal to this cube root of horsepower two over 100. Now this might intimidate some of you, but it doesn't need to, to get rid of this cube root because we don't want to, to deal with this. We're going to just cube both sides of our equation, both sides of the equal sign. And then our cube root is gone. So by cubing this, and by cubing this, we have not affected the equation in any meaningful way, okay? So one cubed is still one, two cubed is eight. And now we have horsepower two over 100 without our cube root, which is what we wanted. Then our final step, we need to get the 100 over here. So, so horsepower two is isolated all by itself. So we will multiply both sides of the equation by 100. And so we'll end up with um, 1 8th times 100 as our final answer, which happens to be 12.5. The units there are horsepower. So that that is stunning. We, by lowering our speed by 50%, we reduced our power consumption um, by 
to one eighth of the original power consumption. Our 100 horsepower motor is only is only utilizing or only needing to use 12 and a half horsepower. So there will be significant energy savings, cost savings in operating that way. VFDs, however, are expensive and generally are not justified if a compressor will operate fully loaded most of the time. For this reason, systems with multiple compressors may only equip the trim machine with a VFD.